a little while back, I reviewed this book, Unsold. I am back, but instead of just reviewing Soul Smith, I'm going to review the rest of the books. Um, there is another book coming out in November, and when it comes out, me and Daddy are going to listen to it. But until then, this is my review of Soul Smith, straight up to Bloodline. Okay, so starting with Soul Smith, starting just about right after um, everybody. Well, not everybody, but Lyndon and Yaren get out of Sacred Valley. They start to camp out outside of Sacred Valley. And Lyndon has now reached Copper, which is about the lowest a normal sacred artist is at. That's the lowest. Outside where they are, ancient ruins start popping up. And... That means that a lot of sacred artists come and are really trying to fight these things off. Lyndon and Yaren are, well, not much is really happening with them. They got all that stuff that they stole from Elder Rom back in Unsold, but... That cloud ship can only go so far. I think the only real good thing they got from that experience was a little blue. Which is like a fairy thing that they took from Elder Rom. Lyndon wants to advance. Lyndon turns to the only people he can. Or the only skill he can. Soulsmithing. It's like it sounds. It's like any other type of smithing. It's just mending and molding whatever you've got on you into something else. He meets a woman named Fisher Gesha who has spider legs and cooks spider stew occasionally. And life's looking good. And then they meet Athan, which isn't a bad thing. It's Athan's good, but Athan is Norelius. And somewhere along the time that they meet him, you know, they're just like, mm, man, we are not advancing quickly, are we? And Athan, since he is an Aurelius, and the Aureliuses are quite rich, he's going to be able to help them advance. And as Lyndon does slowly start to get more powerful... He gets more powerful enemies. So the next one is Black Flame. I think this one might be my favorite. Lyndon has a year before he has to fight an opponent, which no one believes that he can beat. And unless he learns sacred, the sacred arts again from scratch, there's just about no chance that he's going to win. And even then, it's, like, this much of a chance. Lyndon and Yaren travel to the Black Flame Empire. And they want to find a master of the Black Flame path. The Black Flame Empire isn't doing that well. And there are really no sacred artists who practice the path of Black Flame anymore. Because... The Black Flame Clan is a fallen clan. In their searches, they find the next member of their group, Orthos. Orthos is a turtle. And he may have a little bit of dragon in him, too. I'm not sure. But he's a giant black turtle. He's really cool. Um, Orthos teaches... Lyndon, the path of black flame. If he succeeds, Lyndon that is, he has a chance at a good life. But if he fails, death. When I first listened to the first two books, 
I thought they were moving just a little bit slowly, but this one is start when it starts to get more my pace, which is a little bit faster, but still not so fast that you don't even know what's happening. Up to the next one. So, Linden is a black flame. And with his duel approaching, he is locked away in prison. The skies were in prison, actually. Um, because the Sky Sworn, also known as the Protectors of the Empire, have imprisoned him to keep him under control. And, um, it's funny. While reading this, I couldn't help but laugh every time that the Sky Sworn went into Linden's prison. And, by the way, Mercy, who's an Akura, she joined at some point during this book and the last one. I can't remember exactly when. But it's always so much, so funny when Mercy and Yaren and Athan and Orthos and Little Blue always somehow manage to get into Linden's prison without tripping any of the alarms to the point where the Sky Sworn are just like, all right, who's he got in his cell this time? When Linden does face his opponent, He'll be facing Jai Long. This ancient thing that we learned about in Soulsmith, it's a dread god. And uh, the dread gods are really powerful. And um, even like the Bleeding Phoenix, which is one of the Dread Gods, if the Bleeding, bleeding Phoenix ever even f flew past the Black Fame Empire, down it falls. But only the Sky Sworn stand between the people and the Dread Gods. And it's looking like Lyndon might have to join them. The next book in this series is Ghostwater. And Ghostwater has its own little backstory, which I'll go ahead and tell you. So, there's a monarch, and his name is Northstrider. And he created his own world that housed some of his most valuable experiments. And this world was known as Ghostwater. But it was damaged by the attack of the Bleeding Phoenix, and a team of Skysworn were sent to discover Discover and recover whatever they could from the world which was dying. The plan doesn't work, and Linden and Orthos are alone in the monarch's world. And there are some benefits to being stuck in Ghostwater, but Ghostwater's collapsing, and they could die if they don't get out soon enough. And Ghostwater isn't as empty as it seems. There are some other folks, one of which is a mind spirit named Dross. Dross is purple, and Dross is funny. <laughs> Up till this point, Orthos was my favorite character, head to head with Linden, uh, not Linden, Yaren, but Dross takes the cake. Dross is awesome. He is witty. Dross basically says to Linden, hey, I want to live in the back of your brain and suck energy out of you occasionally to make myself stronger. And it works, but it's weird for Linden. I don't think I would be as brave as Linden and let Dross into my head. Because, you know, Dross can see his memories and all of this other stuff. It's kind of like he's got his own self-conscious, self-conscious conscience. It was definitely one of the better books, I think. Ghostwater just has a nice weight to it. And another person they find in Ghostwater is Zeal. Zeal is horned like he has green horns his modra channels which is like blood channels 
they've been damaged from a fight, but we don't know what kind of fight it was. So they take Zia with them along with Dross. They get out. Next book, Underlord. There's a tournament. It's called the Uncrowned Tournament. It's only for Underlords, though. Yaren and Lyndon and Mercy and now Zeal and even Aethon want to join. Now, Aethon's already an Underlord, so if he advances, he can't compete. Yaren and Lyndon and Mercy and Zeal join this tournament. And they are sent to a training ground. And Lyndon and the rest of them are very eager to get whatever they can out of this experience, no matter if they do it by making some enemies or making some friends. So, it's awesome what the author, Will White, can do from the original book everything has gone so far it's awesome and the next book is uncrowned the monarchs of different worlds in the book uncrowned all have um their own competitors for the Uncrowned Tournament that they pick from their different sects and districts and all like that. Monarchs are Emrys Silentborn, Memory of the World, Tiberian Aurelius, the Fallen Patriarch, by the way, Tiberian and Athen are related, Akura Malus, the Queen of Shadows, also Mercy's Mother, which we'll learn more about that, Sheshethkanaz, the King of Dragons, Rhaegon Shen, Emperor of Lions, the Luminous Queen Shamyara, the Eight Man Empire, and North Strider. North Strider wasn't supposed to be in there. North Strider came unannounced. And now he's judging the tournament. And the monarchs are the most powerful sacred artists on Cradle. They rule with unquestioned authority. And most of them don't bother talking to people under them because it's a waste of their time and to meet face to face with one it's legendary for someone like Lyndon or Yaren and now they're all in one place to determine whose successor is best in the world and that is what the uncrowned king tournament is for this one there's not much I can say without spoiling it all so I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want to be mean uh, so we'll just go to the next book in winter steel um, the uncrowned king tournament is reaching the final rounds it's tapering away a lot of folks they're out of the tournament now a dread god is stirring. And this dread god will rise as soon as the tournament ends. That means there's not much time until the dread god comes. That's bad. So, if it's gonna be put back in the sea or if it's gonna be allowed to rampage across the world, all depends on the monarchs on which of them is, are left standing, that is. So, this is the second to last book that, have, that has been published so far. It's the eighth book. This is where we start to get a little bit more into the actual lives of the people that we've been reading about. The book is read in third person, but you can see in London's head. So it's omniscient third person. Dross 
has become a fully fledged being at this point, but he still lives in the back of Lyndon's head. Knowing that he's not going to be kicked out has done wonders for his self-esteem. And uh, he likes to make jokes at Lyndon's expense more than Lyndon would enjoy it. The Uncrowned Tournament is now done after it's... It start, it's still going at the start of the book, but by about the middle of the book, it's over. I'm not going to tell you who wins the tournament, but this person gets a ton of attention. And this person, well, they've got a few favors that they can get from the monarchs, which is awesome. At Wintersteel, which is the ninth book, until the tenth book in this series, comes out this is the last one and it's time to go back home for Lyndon meet his family again see his older sister and his parents you know that dread god it's heading towards sacred valley they go to sacred valley but what they don't count on is well they're all gonna be weaker because of the suppression field around sacred valley so, everybody's weaker. Since Yaren joined with her blood shadow, she's weaker than the rest of them. So she kind of has to tag along with Lyndon for the entirety of the book, which um, Druss really enjoys that for comedic materials. Uh, a lot of comedic materials. So, it's been a long time, though, since Lyndon left. He hasn't seen his family in a while. I mean, he's lost an arm he's progressed i guess all the way up to sage now he's different um so yeah they go to sacred valley but nobody recognizes him so i'm not gonna say anything else because then i'd be spoiling the rest of the book so go read them they're on audible you will have to pay for them though so I would recommend just getting them in book form. However, Bloodline, Bloodline is still free on Audible right now, but that could change at any point. I love this series. I think you guys will love it too. So until next time, make sure to make time for tea and a good book.